Hey everybody, this is Larry with another Shop Tips Tuesday. In this episode, we're gonna go over a caliper, how and when to use it. So let's head over to the table and check it out. All right, so we're here over at the, uh, at the workbench and we're gonna go over the parts of the caliper first. We're gonna go over the vernier caliper first. Um, I think it's incredibly important that you learn how to use a vernier caliper. Um, the reason why is, uh, you know, you're gonna run out of batteries on your digital and the digital ones are easier to read and they, they take absolutely no you know, no talent to read them. Um, you just look at the scale and you know it's much like a digital watch. Um, however, you're gonna run out of battery. The battery is gonna, you know, crap out on you at the, at the worst time and production doesn't stop because you don't have a battery in your micrometer or your caliper. So let's go back into old school. Let's go and read, um, you know, some dimensions based off of, uh, you know, an analog set. So what we've got here is we've got a, a vernier caliper and we're gonna go over some of the parts here. We're gonna open up the caliper and um, we've got our beam, which is the long handle here. Uh, and that is, um, that shows us our scale. And in this scale here, it's in centimeters and inches. We're only gonna worry about inches here. That's what my shop functions on. So we're gonna worry about the inches. Uh, once again, we've got a scale on the top and the bottom. We're concentrating on the top scale because that goes down to one thousandths of an inch. Now over here, we've got our our upper jaws and our lower jaws. And the significance between them is the upper jaws are used to measure inside diameters and or inside, you know, uh, inside measurements. The lower calipers are used to do outside measurements. Then over here, we've got our, our slide um, that comes out uh, on the end here, our beam. And this is for measuring depths or some people call it a depth rod. Um, up here, we've got our locking screw, and this is for basically, uh, you know, when you're transferring measurements, you're going to come from here, you're going to grab your measurement, you're going to lock it down and go right down your measurement, that, what you've got there. So now let's go ahead and talk about some of the, um, the things that you need to be concerned with when you're, when you're doing measurements. With measurements, it's easy to think... Um, in thousands, you want everything to be in thousands. And, and uh, one of the first things that I had a hard time with when I was learning machining was what is a thousandth of an inch? Uh, to give you a scale on what a thousandth of an inch is, we take our piece of paper here and you were to measure the thickness of a piece of paper, it's about four thousandths of an inch. So you fit four one thousandths of an inch in here. Um, now, the other thing is a dime. Everybody knows a dime, right? You, we've all seen them, we've all got them. Uh, a dime is about 50 thousandths of an inch. So it's not very large. It's just under a 16th of an inch there. So for those of you who came uh, from woodworking or something like that, much like I did, uh, you know, you're dealing with 30 seconds, maybe 60 fourths of an inch, but for the most part, it's a 32nd of an inch, eighth inch, those types of things. Uh, when I came into machining, I thought one thousandths of an inch was absolutely ridiculous. And now that's what we work with all the time. We're, we're actually usually tenths of an inch so even you know farther down the scale so now let's go ahead and, and quickly measure a part here and i'll go over well before we measure the part why don't we go over the different um how to read a vernier caliper so in order to read a vernier caliper i'm going to stand up here and get closer in i believe we're about right there i think that's good but what we've got here is we've got our numbers, our number scales. And in this one, it counts up by uh, 200 thousandths at a time. So remember, we're thinking hundreds or uh, thousandths of an inch, not hundreds. Um, so I'm going to write down a number here. All of our numbers, our single numbers are, you have um, on our scale, we're counting over 0, 1, 2, 3, Four. Those would be hundred thousandths of an inch. So our whole numbers are one hundred thousandths of an inch. Now next to them, you're going to see these little gradations here, these striations here, and there's four of them per one hundred thousandths. That means if you were to divide that hundred thousandths by four, then we've got twenty-five thousandths. Those are twenty-five thousandths. And it just happens to be the top scale here on the top here has twenty-five thousandths along the edge of it. And we're gonna show you how to read that in just a second. So basically, we're gonna look over, we're gonna count where we are over, we're gonna see where our number is, see how many of those striations we are that we're not past the whole number, and then we're gonna move farther down the scale here and we'll read that. So now you've got your hundreds, and then you've got your uh, tens, 
thousandths broken up into 25 thousandths of an inch and that can be on this scale here we're only going to one thousandths of an inch there are other scales that you can read up to tenths of an inch but for right now one thousandths of an inch is good so we're going to grab our part here and we're going to measure the outside diameter or not the outside diameter but the outside of that part i'm going to lock it in place and now i can put this down and let me tilt it so it's out of the light here and this one actually i remember this part we measured it before and i meant to grab a different one this is exactly one inch then what we can see is you can see all of our whole numbers so we're going 200 400 600 800 thousandths and then we're exactly at an inch and that line that zero lines up exactly with the one inch i believe the length of this though was off um, a whole number so let's go ahead and see where we are on that Nope, actually that one is exactly two inches. Here we go. So this one here is a little bit easier to read. I knew there was a dimension on here that we could use. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lock that. Um, before we do any measurements though, let's, let's uh, treat our calipers as if we were using them in, a, in an environment, uh, a machining environment. The first thing you'll wanna do is either use your fingers and wipe off the jaws or take a light cloth and wipe off the jaws. Make sure there's no chips in there. You want no interference in it. Bring it in, make sure that there's no, you know, nothing binding there that's gonna get caught up when you're doing your measurement. And now we're gonna measure our piece. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna lock our jaw, and you can keep the part in there if you want to. Um, for me, it's easier when, while we're doing this demonstration to pull that out. So we're at, let's go over and we're gonna count the numbers, the whole numbers before we get to zero. We're gonna do one, two, three. I think I might be a little bit too high here. Let me, let me back off. So it looks about right there maybe. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And it looks like we're just over the six. So we're going into the 25 thousandths. Remember, we're not quite past the first, um, first hash mark. So we're not over 25 thousandths of an inch. So we're at 60 thousandths or 600 thousandths of an inch. And then we're gonna look at and see where the key with this is to read this upper scale is you're looking where any one of these vertical lines here correspond with a lower vertical line on the, um, the larger vernier scale. So we're gonna tilt the micrometer so we can see it a little bit better. And we're looking for where those lines might line up. So remember we're at 600 thousandths and it looks to be about four, four thousandths lines up right there. So 600, we're not over 25, so we're still only reading the, that. So we're at 0.604. And that's what the dimension of that part would be. So why don't we go ahead and we'll measure the inside diameter of this hole here and we'll show you how to use the inside. Once again, wipe off your jaws, open it up, wipe off the upper jaws, and you're gonna drag your part out, lock it in place so we can pull that off while we're doing our measurements here. And that is we see where our zero is. So we're at 600, 700 thousandths. We are one, I'm still moving in too close to the camera, I believe, I think. So let me, let me back off here so that it make sure I'm getting it. We can always zoom in tighter. So we're at um, 600 thousandths, 700 thousandths, one hash, two hashes between the second and third hash. So that means we're at 2550. Now we're gonna read and see where our lines correspond. So we're at 7, 50, and let's see where the vertical line. It looks like it's actually 751. This one's pretty simple, it comes right out to the first one. So 751, 0.751. And actually that's exactly where that should be because it's a three quarter inch hole. Now, real quick, we'll go ahead and measure our, um, our let's do a, a measurement here with the thickness of this, um, this relief here, this counter bore, or this uh, um, edge here on this part. So we're gonna lock that down. Once again, we're gonna lock it down. We're gonna look at our scale, and we're one, two, three, but not quite four. So we're not even at 100 thousandths yet. So we're between the third and the fourth hash mark. That puts us at 75 and then whatever we read here on this upper scale. And the upper scale is we're gonna move over 
until we see they line up. And it looks to be about six, six thousandths of an inch, so it's right there. So we're at 75 plus six thousandths would be 80.81 inches, 0 0.081 inches, 81 thousandths. There you go. Okay, so now that we've covered that, um, how do you, which objects are you gonna use a caliper for? Um, most calipers are used for, uh, you can use them to measure diameters. They're not the best part or the best tool for measuring diameters. The best tool to do that is actually a micrometer. We're gonna go over that next. Um, but the, the micrometer or the caliper will give you a good uh, rough estimate of what they are. They're good at doing like uh, boxes, you know, rectangular parts, that type of stuff. Um, outside, inside dimensions, that type of thing. Uh, when you're measuring, especially accurate, when you want to measure accurate radiuses, or not radiuses, but diameters, that's where you want to get in and use your caliper and, or the micrometer. And we'll get into that next. Go ahead and put that away and then let's grab our dial caliper now. We'll go over the same parts here on a dial caliper. They're virtually identical. The only difference is the scale on here. So you've still got your beam that comes across. We've got our depth gauge on the end here. We've got a fine adjustment uh, uh, screw here, or a, a boss here. We've got our lock so that we can do our uh, locking screw. We've got our bezel lock. We can rotate the bezel around so that we can re-zero out. And that's one of the things with this one here, we'll show you how to zero that out here in just a second. Um, if you can look on this, this one's only in inches. So it's, um, we only have the inch scale on the bottom and this goes down to thousandths of an inch again. Uh, we've got our upper jaws, our lower jaws for measuring inside and outside of objects. And uh, we'll just read our scale here. So <clears throat> when we're coming in here, we're gonna, um, very first thing is you'll see uh, this, the needle, when we bring it in and we wipe off the face, we're going to zero out our caliper, uh, wipe off the inside jaws. We're going to move our caliper jaws in together and hold them tight. And we're going to rotate our, our bezel. As you can see, our, our bezel, we can, we can rotate and re-zero out. So now we're going to bring it over, make sure that we come back to zero. I usually check this two or three times. Then we'll go ahead and lock our bezel down. Now we can't rotate the bezel. And now we're going to go ahead and measure our objects. If you remember, we measured um, 0 0.604 on this object here. So let's go ahead and close it down and see how close we were on that. It looks like this one here we measure 0 0.606, somewhere about uh, between uh, 606 and 607. So probably 6065. Uh, so that puts us at a plus or minus two and a half thousandths. Point six oh six five is what we'll call that. Then uh, three quarters of an inch for the inside diameter. Once again, we're here. And it looks like we are at, actually it looks like our dimension here is about five thousandths off of what our other one was. Now that could also be where we measured on it. Sometimes the, uh, the diameter will change because this was a machine diameter instead of a board out diameter. It looks like we are 7.52. So we're about a, a thousandths of an inch difference there. And then if we measure the, the flange we're about 0 0.087. And all of these are coming off about five thousandths difference, 0 0.086. So. Now the key when doing your measurements, especially with a micrometer, and it will, I guess with both of them, is making sure that when you're measuring, you're holding objects square to um, the measuring face or the, the uh, and by measuring face, I mean the inside jaws or the, uh, uh, the outside edges here. And what can happen is you can easily cant something and not even realize you're doing it. Or you have uh, your calipers at a slight angle, I guess that would be canning, wouldn't it? Um, inside the, the diameter and you can get false readings on there. And of course this is overly exaggerated, but you can see if I have this tilted and I'm not just resting on it, then I can, 
get a false reading on it. Another thing is make sure you're using as much of the jaws as possible doing your measurement. And the reason why is if you measure with just the tips, many times the tip measurement can be different than the, than the, the measurement down farther. Um, there could be a slight taper to the, the part that you're m measuring. And uh, what you wanna do is you wanna get that mean measurement, that average measurement there. That's pretty solid there. Okay, so now that we've gone over all the parts with the dial caliper, uh, we've done the vernier caliper and the dial caliper. We've shown a couple measurements and how to read these. Um, we're gonna go ahead and, and, and call this video finished. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, pl please leave them down below in the comment section. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and remember to hit that uh, alarm button. Uh, that way you can get updates whenever we release a new video.